everybody, Scoutcrafter here again. Uh, today we're going to do something, we're going to talk about utility knives because we have a little challenge coming up for March 1st, which uh, seems pretty exciting so far. A lot of interest in it and I'm looking forward to it. But uh, let's get into a little bit of the history I, like I said I was going to talk about. And uh, we'll look, show it some of my collection. I have a pretty modest collection. We'll check it out and uh, see what's okay, going on. Okay, real quickly, let's start off with uh, the definition of a utility knife, what we're going to be talking about today. These are not utility knives, what we're going to be talking about. Again, they are utility knives. Don't let anybody kid you because they can be used for utility uses. But uh, what we're going to be talking about is the basic Stanley type utility knife. Now, this is what's normally known as a box cutter. If you don't have one of these, this is an excellent addition to your toolbox. Basically what it is, it's a single edge razor blade that fits into a small holder and then it, it slides into here. And when you want to access it, you go like this, cutting boxes, it's fantastic. It does a much better job for cutting boxes than anything else. Um, next thing we have, these are called snap knives. Snap knives here traditionally have little sections that could break off when they get dull. This is great for doing wallpaper and things like that where you tend to dull out a knife very quickly and uh, you could just snap it off. A lot of guys like these that use it for work. Now, we're going to be talking about today is the basic Stanley utility knife. Now, um, Stanley wasn't the only company that made them, as you'll see, but they're credited with pretty much being the first ones. This is the first model that uh, that I know of that they made. Uh, it goes back to 1936. They came out with a uh, interchangeable blade, which you could take off and replace. And uh, this knife started it all. And it was uh, much more heavy duty. It was great. The guys that... Um, were a little bit harder on their knives, but also wanted to change them out so they didn't have to sharpen them. This was the knife Stanley was uh, did a, a tremendous business with these, and this is where it started. Let me show you some of the old ones. Okay, our earliest brand of utility knives all had more or less utility. They had the uh, ventilating holes in there. Um, they did away with them later on, I think because of moisture got into the knives and, and rusted some of the... Uh, the blades that were in there, but um, it was a nice uh, feature for some of the early blades. It did uh, for some of the early knives because it did help you with the grip. Now, you'll see on some of these that says Defiance. Defiance was uh, Stanley's uh, economy line and later on went to the Stanley Handyman line, which is uh, carried on. And Stanley used their name for their best quality knives. Um, Basically, a lot of the Defiance knives were painted. Stanley would sometimes uh, do embellishments, like here's a Stanley knife. You can see they painted around in here and probably polished the outside like we're going to be doing. So uh, Stanley took the extra step to get the extra money for their name brand knives, their flagship models. But uh, right now, this is what we have as far as these are cast iron knives here. They're all cast iron and the 1299s, the early ones, were cast iron also, and you could see uh, the weight you could feel right away. They also started making 1299s in aluminum. The problem with aluminum is, you know, you would have, this would show up. You know, whenever you were using a knife, you would start to wear off the tip, so. But the aluminum was cheaper and they could sell more knives, so they stayed with that. You don't see cast iron knives usually made anymore. And uh, they even made a uh, 299. This is aluminum, but it's a hold version. Uh, and then we have some over here, 299s that are uh, aluminum or zinc or, you know, I don't know what the exact metal that they used. Later on, Stanley introduced the Model 199. Now you can see here, these are all that uh, zinc or aluminum, whatever they were using. I don't know the exact alloy, but you could see, you could definitely feel the difference in weights with some of them. Some of them were maybe zinc, some were aluminum. I don't know. But uh, you can see the difference in the fonts. Some of the font is different with the different models. You can also see compared to the 299 in the earlier knives, it was uh, a little bit longer. You can see there it's about three quarters of an inch longer. It gave you a little bit of a better grip on there. And compared to the knife that we'll be working on, you could see here the difference uh, if I hold it up. You could see the one noticeable difference besides the screw is also you see these two little tabs I was talking about that are missing on the older 199s. But basically they're pretty much the same casting, especially when you take the paint off. You can see they look very similar, except these two here you see don't have the lanyard hole. You see that? So those are very early. 
Okay, as we started getting into the 50s, you could see some of the uh, other companies started to jump on Stanley's original design with their uh, replaceable blade. And again, the blade's where you make the money. You sell the knife cheap, then they got to keep coming back for blades. So some of the different manufacturers had different blades. The Lewis came out with a really nice, comfortable design, and they also had a very a nice safety feature with this retractable uh, shield in the front, and uh, they sold many of these knives. Stanley even tried to come out with blade guards so that you could slip them on and uh, put it in a toolbox without sticking yourself. Uh, also in the 50s, like I said, they came out with different streamlined designs. Um, here we have a rudimentary design by this no-slip grip, but uh, anything that could get you to buy their knife when you went into a store, a little bit cheaper, and uh, this is the 50s. Again, these are all fixed blade knives. Okay, in 1963, the uh, first retractable uh, Utility knife is uh, patented, and although there were other knives before then, that uh, but they're given credit in '63 for this patent. It looked exactly like this knife. Stanley jumped on it, bought the patent, and started producing them. But that so did some other companies. And by the '60s and late '70s, these were commanding the market. Although some companies were still making some fixed blade knives in different ways, uh, a lot of people like the retractable knives for the safety reason. You could put them in a toolbox, not get stuck with them. And uh, they made them in all different materials. Uh, some, like uh, this one here, this Miller's Falls in economy type, were made of plastic, but they had an interesting design where you could slide this back and access some uh, extra blades. Uh, they were all trying to come out with some kind of gimmick. Um, some of them, like uh, this Lutz, some of the um, utility knives were heavy die cast metal and uh, would appeal to the uh, the person that would put a little bit more uh, wear and tear on them. Uh, another Stanley followed through with the same type of designs, but you could see they were all marketing the same basic type of knife. This was my first knife, first utility knife I ever bought in the 70s. There's a craftsman, my buddy Jim West has the same knife we were talking about it but uh this has served me well over the years and um again this was this was uh where the market was going and this is what everybody pretty much has even today they're very similar although they uh they were always trying to get with different ways to access the blade without having to take the knife apart so that was the key and that's where we go from there now once the 80s and 90s came every manufacturer was coming out with different lines and uh, trying to gimmick their way into uh selling more knives than the other guy and uh what the big thing was was they were trying to appeal to the person that needed to change a blade quickly now gone was the traditional uh type of knife where you would uh, you know just have to unscrew it they that was taking too long so they came out with all kinds of drop doors you could see here on this starrett where it uh, drops down here and and exposes blades but everybody had their own different choice here in this dewalt by pushing this little button here up here it releases the top door and it exposes the blades here you could see and then when you take the blade out uh, to put a new blade in all you had to do is push this all the way forward There's a little button on the side here squeeze the button in and pull the blade out put the new blade in same way Squeeze the button in press the blade in and you were ready to go again. That was the new thing to go for the uh, For the the new gimmick that everybody was kind of trying out Also different ways that the knife would open up if you uh, turned the screw you didn't have a need a screwdriver here you would just turn the screw like this and the knife would open up so you slide it to the back and you would be, have access to your blades and you could do the same thing here putting it together turn this a couple turns you didn't need a screwdriver so that was a uh the new way the kind of the gimmicks they were getting so each into. knife had their own way of trying to uh to use the gimmick of getting accessing your blade here we have an all metal hide knife that if you uh you push this in like this it's spring loaded and you'll hear it pop open it will, the uh the actual knife will pop open and will open up on the hinge kind of and and you could see you have access to your your blades and to enter a new blade and snap shut same thing with the fat max fat max you push this button the back opens up gives you access to the blades so um this was kind of the thing to have now this banana this is a, a funny knife because it was shaped like a banana but it had the quick release that you can open it up interesting old knife the exacto here was form fitted and uh, let me show you some unusual yeah, i thought we close out with some uh some unusual ones this is a, a 
uh, Lewis is still producing these, so that's that's uh, new. Here's an unusual one that, uh, remember we were talking about the old ones, but look where this one's made, made in Canada. So you don't see too many of these floating around. Uh, here's one that uses thumb pressure. If you see here, it uses thumb pressure. This way you uh, you use your thumb and you can get a really good uh, uh, pressure on that. Uh, came out with a few of these type uh, where you squeeze. Squeeze it once, it opens up. And then to, uh, to release it, you just push this button. That's pretty interesting. And uh, these, they come with sheets because these are so big. A lot of these were used by carpet layers and stuff because they need the extra leverage and uh, because of the big knife. But how this works is you spin this open like that and it opens up in a hinged way. You'll see here, see? It hinges open and it gives you access to, uh, to new blades and to replace the blade. And then you just close it and spin this closed. And it, when it's closed, it's very solid. It's a good, uh, this one's a good one. Okay, here we have a real interesting one in the sense that uh, this one opens real quickly. There's a little slide here. And all you do is you pull this back like that, pop, you hear that little pop, and this opens right up. Gives you access to the blades right here and, um, and the slide mechanism. And to close it, all you have to do is squeeze this button once and it's closed. Very easy to uh, change blades. Also comes with a sheath. Um, over here we have a, these are super lightweight, about a quarter of an ounce. Uh, a really good uh, knife for, for just uh, opening box or whatever you have to do. This is a really nice one for an inexpensive. Stanley, there was a bunch of folding knives that came out, and a lot of people didn't like them because of the chance they could fold up on you and cut you. So uh, Stanley came out with this knife here, and what this does, you could see here, by uh, it presses the whole front of the knife out, making it like a solid uh, knife here. And which is still retractable instead of just having a blade retract. So that's a little interesting. Um, this hide here, this hide is pretty interesting because a uh, little end cap here. And when you take that end cap off, you think there'd be blades there, but it's not. It's solid. And what it does, it rotates like this and gives you access to the blade and to replace the blade. And when you want to close it, all you do is you just uh, bring it back to that position, screw the end cap on, and you're good to go. It has a nice design to it. It's a solid metal knife. Um, over here, you remember these little slits here? That's if you have to cut some rope or anything, or twine, and you don't have to extend the blade. You can cut it just like that without, it's very safe. Uh, another type of Stanley, but this one's different from this one, because this one here, and that's how you can only find out what's good, is you have to pick up more than one. So as you open this up, you can see how this works. It's spring-loaded. And to close it, you do the same thing and just tighten this up. The problem is that no matter how tight you make it, you still have a little bit of play there. So I never like this particular one, although it's it's big in the hand. Uh, over here, we have a Craftsman. And you can see here it's got the knives, the blades in here that you can just uh, open this up and pull the blades up. But over here... Um, you can see it's it's like an anodized, and you pop that, and here's the access to the blades very quick, and here's the button that takes the blade out. Uh, here's a real safe one from Starrett, and uh, here you just squeeze it every time you have to use it. You don't have to worry about, and you pick it up, squeeze it, cut, release, very smooth. Extra blades go in here, you just slide them out. So that's pretty interesting. And last but not least, we have this monster. Now it makes this one a little bit unusual as it has a rolling wheel on the bottom. Now, if you're doing any kind of carpet work or anything, you could roll this wheel and it'll help you in stability. And uh, you can see how that wheel rolls as you uh, pull the blade across. To change the blade, you just push this button here and this opens up like this. And then you have your spare blades in here, your fixed blade up there to close it. Just pull that down until it clicks and has a, uh, you know, it's pretty big. You need big hands to work on this. So in closing, you're probably wondering which one's my favorite, and that would have to be this one here. And it's not because it's uh, my oldest one, it's because of my great-grandfathers, and I uh, really enjoy this one, and I'm gonna be restoring this soon, so. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little presentation, and take care, have a nice day, bye-bye.